I did not like the Owl House finale. I loved it! No, no, just, just, just kidding. I didn't actually. I thought it was kind of, uh, bad and not good. Now, let's get one thing straight before I elaborate. I want to preface this video by saying that I absolutely love the Owl House. It has been one of my favorite cartoons to come out of the modern era. There are so many things that are so great about it. The characters, the animation, the story, our lord and savior, Hootsifer, of course. And because I love this show, it pains me to say that I just didn't like the series finale that much. Watching and Dreaming wasn't absolutely awful. And yeah, there have certainly been worse Disney show endings before. And, you know, there are still parts of the finale that I really liked. For example, Bellus' death was pretty much perfect, and I'm glad the show actually did kill him. I really didn't think he would be redeemed, but, you know, I still get, uh, change your mind flashbacks every now and then. I also understand that Dana Terrace wasn't really given the free reign she needed to to fully develop the ending due to the Disney overlords cutting the series short. However, I still really liked the two previous Season 3 specials, especially thanks to them, in spite of the brisk pacing. But for watching and dreaming, I just couldn't get into it. Not on first watch or on rewatch. However, I understand that I'm in the minority on that. From what I've seen on YouTube, the reactions to the Owl House series finale have been pretty positive, and in a recent poll I did, 60% of my viewers thought that the episode was great. So, you know what? If you enjoyed the conclusion to the Owl House and were satisfied by it, good for you. I wish I felt the same way, but I just can't ignore the things about the Owl House finale that really bothered me. So, in this video, I wanted to explain the reasons why I thought that Watching and Dreaming was a disappointing ending to such a great show. So, before I get into what I didn't like, let me first clarify that I didn't have a problem with how everything turned out in the end. The Boiling Isles staying connected to the human realm and Luce ultimately going to stay there fits thematically. The series didn't need to go the Amphibia route, having Luce abandon her life at the Boiling Isles. It was nice to see such a happy ending for the characters. However, my problem is how the episode got to the ending. So, let's talk about my first major problem with the finale. The Collector. The Collector was a character that was built up big time. They were shown in the Season 2 finale to be this unstoppable force of chaos, stopping the draining spell and squashing Bellos without even trying. And in For the Future, they are so unnerving, turning all the residents of the Boiling Isles into their playthings and using them as toys for their own amusement. And at the end of For the Future, after Bellos' manipulations, their ending line of... I think I want to play a new game sent chills down my spine. I was terrified for what they were about to do to the main characters. Which is why the portrayal of the Collector in the finale, Watching and Dreaming, was such a letdown for me. Their quote-unquote new game doesn't amount to much in the end, seeing as how Luce fairly quickly breaks out of their illusion, and then Luce, Ida, and King manage to win every game they actually play with them. Then the Collector gets all sad, and Luce has to talk to him about friendship and love, and the Collector just has no presence as a threat at all in this episode. And I get it, okay? The Collector isn't the main villain. Bellos is. But I thought Bellos' plan to possess Rain to manipulate the Collector into doing what he wanted was really cool, and a great way to keep both Bellos and the Collector relevant in the story. But that just doesn't amount to anything. The Collector never really threatens Ida, King, or Luce. The fact that their best friend King lied to them about Ida being trapped in Albeast form, and that the Collector thinks that he was planning on killing them, are never addressed, and the Collector doesn't even seem mad about it. And they are convinced very easily and very quickly, early on in the episode, by Luce to change their perspective and become a better friend. And what's worse is that after the Collector goes through their very rushed redemption arc, they are basically irrelevant for the rest of the episode. Despite being a literal god of chaos, they are seemingly incapable of doing anything to fight against the Bellows Titan, being relegated to just rescuing the characters still in the archives, while Luce the Human has to bail them out not once, but twice in the fight. Yeah, the writers massively nerfed the Collector in this episode, with the epilogue even stating that it took years to repair the Boiling Isles after Bellus's rampage, despite the fact that the Collector should have been able to use their powers to fix everything very quickly. 
Then at the end of the episode, the Collector just goes back to live amongst the stars again. I mean, for me, the Collector was by far one of the most disappointing aspects of the finale. I was predicting he would be redeemed in the end, but the way it was done was just handled so poorly and was such a missed opportunity. Which brings me to my next criticism. Since the Collector is completely removed as a threat by the 21 minute mark, there are still over 30 minutes to fill up for the rest of the episode. So, there has to be some big climactic battle to end the series off on. And so, rather than the characters fighting against the Collector, instead, Bellos goes off and possesses the Titan Heart in his old castle, becoming the Boiling Isles itself, and the final battle is against him. And, look, this is a pretty cool concept, and the way it is animated is absolutely terrifying. Also, it's nice that the finale actually acknowledged the beating heart in Bellos' chambers that was introduced at the end of Season 1, and then just never referenced again throughout all of Season 2, but... I'm sorry, it just makes no sense that Bellos is able to do this. I mean, Bellos barely had enough strength to control Puppet Rain, so how on earth would he be capable of possessing and controlling the entire Titan Corpse? Now, you might say, oh, well, Bellos was able to possess the Titan Corpse because its heart still had Titan blood running through it, which made him way more powerful. But if that's true, then that only creates more holes in the story. See, even though the Titan Heart was never really addressed after Season 1 up until this point, I always just assumed Bellos was using some kind of trick to make it beat and it wasn't actually still alive. Since, you know, Bellos' whole thing is that he's a liar and a manipulator and putting on this act of being able to communicate with the Titan. Because if the Titan's heart really was still alive, then why would Bellos be sending out droves of coven scouts to search desperately for Titan's blood to open the portal door? You have a whole heart full of it in your palace. What's the point? But on top of that, if Bellos really could just possess the heart of the Titan corpse this easily, then what was even the point of possessing Rain and trying to manipulate the Collector in the first place? Well, you might say, Bellos didn't possess the Titan initially because he was scared of the Collector, and it's only after the Collector said that their powers are nullified by Titans that he went ahead and did it. Well, if that's the case, then why didn't Bellos possess the Titan at any time while the Collector was imprisoned in the in-between realm and couldn't do anything? What was the point of the draining spell in the first place? Why go through the effort of gl gradually manufacturing a moral panic about wild magic to rise to power over the course of centuries to manufacture consent for the Coven Sigils in order to drain everyone's magic on the Day of Unity when he could have just possessed the Titan Corpse and killed everyone way more easily and quickly. Now, you might say that Bellos possessing the Titan was only a last resort. Okay, but why? There are not any actual consequences shown for Bellos doing so. Even after being ripped out of the Titan's heart, Bellos is still alive and is even able to maintain his human form. So, no matter how you try to rationalize it, Bellos possessing the Titan Corpse is a complete narrative ass-pull that makes no sense, that retroactively ruins the impact of previous events, and introduces unnecessary plot holes into the story. The final fight against him was cool, I guess, but that actually leads me to my third issue with the finale, which might be the most controversial of all my takes. I could not stand Luce's Titan form in this episode. Don't get me wrong, it looks great, but it just does not fit her character at all. See, one of the things that I've always really loved about Luce, and that is made very clear from the second episode of the series, is that Luce is not special. She is not destined for greatness or gifted with incredible power. She has to work hard throughout the series to bolster her abilities by discovering and studying glyphs. Her strength comes from her compassion, her creativity, and, most importantly, her ability to think quickly, which is demonstrated multiple times throughout the series, most prominently in her, both her fights against Bellos in the season 1 and 2 finales, where Luce is completely outmatched and can't do anything to defeat him outright, but uses trickery and deception to get one over on him. Which is why Titan Luce just bothered me so much in the finale. After she quote-unquote dies, Luce just for some reason ends up in the in-between realm where she meets King's dad who just gives her the power she needs to defeat Bellos. It doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel consistent, and it reminds me way too much of spoilers for Naruto by the way. 
When, at the end of the Naruto series, where after the main character dies, the Sage of Six Paths just miraculously appears to him, gives him ninja Jesus powers because the plot demands it, and brings him back to life. It's an ass pull is what it is, but I feel like it's even worse for Luce, because she was a character who was specifically not portrayed as a powerhouse throughout the series. And this massive power-up for Luce also ends up bleeding into my fourth and final major complaint about the Owl House finale. With Luce becoming so powerful, she took away the importance of other characters. While King, Rain, and Ida did at least get to participate in the final battle with her, Amity, Hunter, Willow, Gus, and everyone else are completely sidelined, with the most important things they ever do being waking up the collector puppets and the archives. That's it. And I get that the supporting cast still had plenty of good moments in the previous two episodes, and the show was pressed for time, but it was still pretty disappointing. So, yeah, those were my four major complaints about the Owl House season finale that massively brought down the quality of the episode for me and left me feeling unsatisfied. So now, as I do with many of my videos, having laid out what I didn't like about the episode and why, it's time for some constructive criticism. How would I rework the series finale to, one, make the Collector an actually threatening antagonist that accomplishes something, two, make Bellos possessing the Titan Corpse make sense, 3. Remove Luce's Titan form, while still keeping her important, and 4. Give the side characters more to do in the final battle. Well, here's my idea. It's rewrite time! After the Collector traps Luce, Ida, and King in their nightmares, they start playing their games with them. But in this rewrite, the Collector easily wins all of them, being a chaos god and all, you know, with the characters just barely managing to survive game by game. As they torment them, Bellos keeps trying to convince the Collector to just forget them and destroy the Boiling Isles, as they only really need one true friend to be happy. The Collector puts a pause on his games and goes to confront Ida, King, and Luce, asking why they don't seem to want to be his friends. Of course, they try to explain to the Collector the concept of mortality, and how what he is doing is hurting people and turning them away from him, but the Collector just gets angry, calling them liars. I heard you, King. You were supposed to be my best friend, but you lied to me about Ida's curse. Then you said you needed a more permanent solution to deal with me. Well, maybe I need to try a more permanent solution with you. The Collector points at Ida, shooting a laser beam at her, but Luce jumps in front of Ida, protecting her with her palisman. I'm okay, Luce says, before her hands start to dissipate into stardust. She, quote-unquote, dies, just like in the original episode, except this time, it's by the Collector's hand. After this, King goes into a blind rage, transforming into a larger, more intimidating version of himself. I just wanted to be your friend, Collector. I never wanted to kill you. But I do now. Thus, a fight scene ensues between King and the Collector of never-before-seen scale, God versus God, with entire landscapes being demolished. King has become unbelievably powerful after his transformation, and with the help of Harpy Ida, he is able to give the Collector a run for his money. During the course of the fight, Bellos is shocked that Ida's weird dog is so incredibly powerful and realizes that King is a titan, hatching a new plan as he barely manages to keep himself in control of Rain and outside of the collateral damage of the fight. Back to the fight, although King is incredibly powerful, he is young and inexperienced, and the Collector ultimately wins the fight, seriously wounded King. Bellows takes this opportunity to jump out of Rain's body right at King, sucking as much of his blood as he can out of King's open wound, like a vampire bat. Rain manages to use his bard magic to get Bellows off King, but Bellows just says, It doesn't matter. With this much young, fresh titan blood, I can finally cleanse the Isles myself. Thus, Bellos slinks away as fast as possible to get to his castle. The Collector, who was watching all of this, is of course extremely confused and asks his best friend Rain what is going on. Rain explains that Bellos was just manipulating them to get what he wanted, and this just destroys the Collector, who realizes that they were deceived and betrayed once again. As they try to process what happened, King gives a rageful scowl at them. They scowl right back, and then they just leave. After that, Rain says that they can't worry about the Collector right now and have to stop Bellos. Rain has a feeling he is going back to his palace and chases after him to try to stop him, while Ida stays back to look after an injured king. Much like in the original episode, Rain tries to stop Bellos from possessing the Titan Heart, but he traps them in his weird juices. 
Then, Bellows crawls up to the beating heart and rips open a hole in it, causing water to spill out. At last, the heart will pump with real blood once more, Bellows says, right before squirming inside of it and taking control. It is after this that we finally cut back to Luce in the in-between realm. Instead of killing her, the Collector actually sent her to be permanently trapped there like he was. Through the reflection of a lake on the Isles, Luz sees the Collector crying and tries to talk to them. It is here where the Collector reveals their backstory to Luz about how they never fit in with the other star children and just wanted a friend. Luz tells the Collector she knows what it is like to want to be understood, and tries to convince them that King didn't mean any harm, and they need to understand other people's perspectives in ju- instead of just treating people as toys to be played with. Just like in the original episode, Luce then takes the Collector on a journey of her adventures throughout the Boiling Isles, except, you know, she's still trapped in the in-between realm while doing so, and as they continue on, the Boiling Isles starts to fall apart due to Bellos' possession. Luce pleads with the Collector to try and stop Bellos, and they seem like they are coming around. Meanwhile, Amity, Gus, Willow, and Hunter manage to wake up everyone in the archives, and along with Ida, it is the people of the Boiling Isles, who were inspired by Luce, who all join together in one final battle to defeat Bellos. They manage to make their way to the heart, and ultimately, Ida is the one to deal the final blow against Bellos, ripping him out of the heart. And in that moment, there is a different Season 1 callback that I feel would have honestly been more meaningful than... Ida says to Bellos, Luz told me, you once said, in the grand scheme of things, the Owl Lady's life is insignificant. Well, how insignificant do I seem now, Bellos? However, after the battle is over, the Titan arm that Bellos raised to the sky falls back down, about to crush Ida and everyone else. But the Collector appears in front of everyone and stops it. They're all still understandably scared of them, however, they apologize for what they did, and to King specifically. There is still some resentment present, but ultimately their friendship begins to be reconstructed as King and the Collector work together to free Luce from the in-between realm. Then, of course, Bellus's death still plays out the exact same way, and the rest of the episode is still basically the same as it was originally, except with the change that the Collector uses their powers to repair the Boiling Isles pretty quickly, And they actually stay in the Boiling Isles because they feel like they fit in there better. And, you know, him going back to live amongst the stars originally just felt kind of weird and out of place. So, yeah, that is how I would have changed the ending of the Owl House. In this version of events, the Collector isn't nerfed. He poses a real threat that actually, quote-unquote, kills the main character. And his change of heart feels more impactful. On top of that, Bellus's manipulation of the Collector didn't just amount to nothing in the end, and it actually results in an all-out Titan v. Starchild brawl that I was really bummed we didn't actually get to see originally. And it's only because King was injured and distracted during the fight that Bellus was able to obtain his blood. The Titan Heart is still brought back into the story, and Bellus possesses it, leading to the final fight against the true main villain of the series, only this time it actually makes sense and doesn't introduce plot holes. There is no ass pull with Luce gaining Titan powers, but she still contributes to the victory by saving Ida, allowing her to deal the final blow against Bellos, and by using her compassion and reasoning to convince the Collector of what it means to be a friend, which leads them to save her friend's lives from the falling Titan arm. But the supporting cast also still plays a pivotal role and join together to defeat Bellos. I guess the only main drawback to my rewrite of the finale is that we never got to meet King's dad mom, but I don't think it was super necessary in the first place, and them just coming out and saying what the message is supposed to be regarding Bellos was a little bit too on the nose for me. So, I want to know, what do you guys think about my changes? Do you think I am being too hard on the ending of The Owl House, or do you share my sentiments about it being kind of disappointing? Again, I want to make clear, this video isn't me trying to tear down The Owl House out of hate. But when I watch something that I have serious problems with, I am not just going to go into denial and pretend I absolutely loved it. So, even if you disagreed with this video, I hope I could at least give a nuanced and fair critique of the Owl House finale. So, uh, in conclusion, Hootie did not get a single speaking line in this episode! How dare you do my boy like that! 0 out of 10, worst finale ever!